Hey you guys, what is up? Robert here, and we are going to be kicking it underway with the Razor Replay pack for Sheth, week 39. We're going to have EG Thorzane as our Red Terran down over here on the right-hand side. And over here on the left, of course, we are going to have Liquid Sheth as our Blue Zerg player. This is going to be played on Antigua Shipyard. And once again, this is from the Razor Replay Pack uh, that L Liquid does provide on their website. This is week 29. Uh, so again, my name is Robert, and I'm going to be uh, being your host for this game. This is one of the first StarCraft II games uh, I've casted, so uh, bear with me here. I really enjoy watching StarCraft II. I really uh, enjoy esports, so I figured, you know, why not pick up this little hobby of casting? So if you guys can uh, leave me some feedback feedback on the YouTube page or under this video, that would be amazing. So again, Antigua Shipyards, we are going to have closed positions, so this is going to be on ladder. Thorzane was asking Sheth if he was streaming, and that was a negative from Sheth. And a uh, negative from Thorzane for streaming as well. So what a peaceful game. What a peaceful game. No interruptions, no viewers saying what they did wrong, what they should do right, just these two alone on Antigua Shipyard. So again, close positions. We'll have to see what Liquid Chef and EG Thorzane are going to be giving us for this go-around. Now, of course, uh, EG Thorzane, the Spoon Terran himself, may be playing this pretty passive, pretty slow. You know, we, we it's not very uncommon for Terrans to go for three quick command centers on this map, but maybe because of these close positions we see here, uh, you know, he'll play it a little bit more safe. Oh, Liquid Chef a little bit tired from a flight home. So, you know what, we may be seeing, uh, you know, maybe some hiccups in his play. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Thorzane's questioning his tiredness. And here we go, we have one Rax coming up right now. Again, I would not be surprised if a command center does not come up behind this. We don't see any gases going down just... Oh, and as I say that, there we go. Thorzane throwing down the one gas. So, you know, now I'm really not expecting that timing to be coming out. I'm not really expecting any Reaper expand as well. If this is a Reaper expand, I'd really be expecting this bunk or this barracks uh, to be placed a little higher on this ledge. At least, you know, give him enough room to get that tech lab, tech lab down as well. And, uh, you know, I can't irritate. I can't say enough, guys, that if you guys can just please give me some feedback uh, on my casting, that would be wonderful. I'd like to do, you know, again, just as this as a hobby, you know, something like these guys are talking so much. I just know in I fly in two days for longer. <laughs> he's just getting ready for another flight. Uh, NASL he's going to on Sunday. So, geez, Chef being very, very busy. Uh, again, scouting out this other close position, and EG Thorzane, of course, not there. So this Overlord is going to get the sneak peek here momentarily, not sending out a drone scout or anything. Hatchery is about halfway done. Uh, he did go for the hatch before the spawning pool, so that is about a 15 hatch spawning pool right after that. Uh, and from EG's Thorzane, nothing too crazy just yet. Probably going to be saving up for uh, some factory play, I would assume as that gas is starting to pile up so we should just see maybe some normal hellion reactor opening the barracks is going to be going to complete the wall oh poor automatron getting taken out by thorzane it just looked at thorzane funny and thorzane wasn't having it and there's that factory play going down so yes again it is going to be some re uh actor hellion opening right now and you know it, there's been a lot of controversy with this opening it just hasn't been as effective lately as you know zergs only have to get you know anywhere between three and four queens and they can hold off hellions all day the hellions can't do anything besides sit outside and try and deny creep the best that they can it's not like it used to be when hellion reactor openings would just roast drones like over and over again and uh now zergs have got this defense down so this opening by terrans just isn't as strong as it used to be there we go we see that reactor going down right there going to be a nice swap out here momentarily uh, there's that command center to follow it up. So this, these Hellions are just going to be giving Thorzane some nice map control. Uh, you know, the Lings are not going to get out of hand. Again, the creep spread, he could deny a few tumors here and there, depending on how many queens Sheth decides to pop out. It is uh, going to be two right now, of course. But we'll see if he goes for that third or fourth for defensive measures. And uh, we actually saw Thorzane pull off two SCVs from the gas. So he just wanted that reactor real quick, just enough gas to get... Uh, that up and the Hellions going 
And, you know, now he's just having this one SCV chill. He wants to continue those minerals because he wants to get this expansion going as fast as he can. Sheth kind of in a tough position right here with these close positions. His third option for spawning is going to be spawning towards his opponent. This is so easy for Terrans to pick up and drop right here. So there's going to have to be a lot of defense from Sheth. And I really wouldn't be surprised if Sheth didn't go from for some sort of two base, huge two base aggression. We're going to have to wait and see what he's going to be doing with that. Uh, Thorzane, here come those Hellions finally. Maybe we can follow those guys, see where they're going to be going. Uh, that expansion's still coming up for Thorzane. Uh, followed up behind this is that third command center that I was talking about. Yes, this is, uh, we are seeing Thorzane still do that. I mean, in this sense, Thorzane is expanding away from Sheth. So this is actually working out in his favor quite well. Uh, unlike Sheth, who has, a, who has to expand towards Thorzane. So, yeah, again, three command centers right away. Pretty common, especially with these Hellions giving uh, Thorzane the map control that he's going to need to hold that. So again, I'm wondering if Chef is going to go for some big aggression here. We see him continuing to pop those drones out. Of course, 10 on the way. That's going to set him about, you know, 38 drones or so. Oh, 35 against the 23 SCVs. Not a lot of aggression on the field out for Chef right now. Just four lings, and that's it. That's why he's got these queens up here at the front. He's got those four queens that I talked about. So again, this Hellion aggression is not going to do a whole lot. It's going to be that extra energy from these queens that are, is going to spread these tumors really, really fast. Uh, Hellions, uh, again, just sitting outside, but we, uh, there, there we go. There we have two more Hellions on the way. I almost thought, uh, Thorzane was going to stop Hellion production there for a second, but no, he's getting up to six Hellions right now. Uh, you know, that's again going to, just going to have to be camped outside the base. There we go, handling those lings. Going to be able to keep that Zelnaga in his control. And there we go. That second expansion is finally up. Third, three-fourths of the way done. And uh, those meals are being dropped down. So we still see both players kind of getting their economy rolling. Not a lot of big aggression or two base play. Just very, very, you know, slow pace. And that's what we should expect from both of these players. You don't see Chef doing a lot of cheesy plays, all ins or anything like that. And you don't see, of course, Thorzane doing that as well. He, Thorzane loves his late game play. So now we see uh, Chef throwing down the roaches. He wants to take care of those Hellions. He wants to get that map control back. And uh, we, we'll have to see what he's going to do there. He goes doing a little simming as well. Uh, going to be blocking off, creating really small chokes so Hellions can't seep through here to get to this drone line. So I really like that play out of Sheth right there. Uh, and we see that tank uh, siege tech is on the way for Thorzane, you know, so he could easily be going for that mechanical style play that he loves so much, that mech play. He is still pumping out a few Marines here and there. Uh, but, I mean, you know, we should see almost a full transition into mech uh, momentarily. This overlord is going to be picked off. It is going to spot this factory, and it is hopefully going to spot that this tech lab is turning. It's turning its wheel right there. There's that tank, so he's got to know siege tech is on the way as well. Did it spot that third base? Let's check that out. Yeah, he did spot this third command. Oh, he spotted this command center, but I think Shesh should know that there is probably another command center down here so that... Thorzane is going for that three command center sort of opening. Two engineering bays on the way as well. We already see Sheth starting a bunch of his upgrades. He's got speed halfway done. And he's got uh, carapace coming out as well. That has just began. Macro hatch going out again. Third base, kind of really hard to take. Easy drops that can happen from the Terrans made to this third base. Uh, a lot of easy containment as well. As we see this containment from the Hellions. Uh, Looks like some creep tumors did get denied, at least one of them up here. We have one left down here at the bottom, and that's still making its way over to this third. So that's going to make it a lot easier for Chef to reinforce his army from this natural to this third base. Uh, we see uh, the, the de defenses from Thorzane coming up right now. Supply depots, you know, working on his sim as well. We see a lot of Terrans starting to throw supply depots out here later in the late game. Even not, it's sometimes not even a full wall. It's just so that it creates really small chokes for the Zerg to kind of combat themselves into. So it's really hard for the Zerg to uh, do do an engagement around the Terran base. You know, nice, well played siege tanks on the high grounds and kind of back here can do a lot of damage. Hellion's still roaming around out here looking for those creep tumors. It looks like Sheth may have tried. Yep, there he goes. He's actually taking these creep tumors on the high ledge and now going to be lowering them once those Hellions are kind of 
out of range. He's got a lot of tumors here that he can work with. A spine crawler moving forward. Queen moving forward as well. There goes one creep tumor. This queen is going to do quite a bit of damage. Going to be able to chase off all six of those hellions. And as the spine crawler finishes up, he's going to be able to start to place those creep tumors out. And he's going to get a lot of creep spread going really fast here. This third finally does come up. And we see Thorzane's third moving out as well. So, you know, they're both uh, pretty evenly matched in terms of economy right now. We have 57 drones for Liquid Chef and 53 for EJ's Thorzane. Uh, we see a little push out going out by Thorzane. That is just a defensive push. You know, he's going to set up the tanks in uh, some decent positions. Oh, set them right by each other, you know. And we see a lot of lings out for Sheth right now. A ton of lings. I can't wait to see what he's going to be doing with this. As we see 1-1 one, one just about to finish up for Liquid Sheth. So we're going to be seeing some nice aggression. Hope he's going to be able to deny this third. But again, these tanks are going to do a ton of damage. So he's going to have to be really careful. Speed has completed as well. And I don't know. I like the position that Sheth is getting himself into. All the lings are going up to the tanks. Now they finally do retreat. But he's lost about half of those lings there. And that is not the engagement, of course, that Sheth wanted. So maybe a little misclick. Maybe that tiredness from traveling too much is finally catching up with him. Hellion still controlling the map in the middle. He needs to get rid of those Hellions. He got that Roach Warren, but he has yet to pump out any Roaches. He's still going for a lot of drones, a lot of economy. He's up to 81 drones right now. 81 drones with the third three-fourths of the way done. So we should only see aggression coming out of Sheth from now on. 81 drones is a ton. So 14 lings. There he goes, getting his tech as well, getting those gases right away. Infestation pit. So no Muta play on the way. He's going to be going for those that Infester play. Uh, we see Carapace 2 going down, and now Thorzane working on his 2-2 two, two upgrades as well. And just, you know, again, being that slow, very passive Terran style. He's got this third base going, you know, he's still working on his upgrades. Uh, he, he, has no, he has no need to push out right now. He's just going to defend and wait for that, that perfect army that he wants. And, uh, you know, Sheth is kind of doing a little bit of the same. He thought he could sneak some lings in there, maybe do some damage to the third, but uh, Thorzane, being the great player that he was, already had those tanks in position and ready for that little counter. Here we go. This is exactly what Sheth has to do on this map. He has to throw up spore crawlers already, you know, just because of uh, how, how close he is to the main base of the Terran. He has really no option not to keep uh, throw those up. That would just leave this third base so exposed. Uh, you know, he, he lose so many drones. But we see a push coming out from Thorzane right now. He's going to be taking out a lot of creep tumors. There goes the scan. Is he going to be able to take out those other three? One does go down. Another one going down. Another scan going down actually as well. 32 lings are on the way. 2-2 uh, two, two upgrades still pretty far off. They're both about even actually in upgrades in terms of research as well. And uh, Thorzane just pushing out a little bit to deny the creep tumors, and he's, you know, playing it really safe. Ooh, here comes some lings to do a little bit of a counterattack, but these tanks are going to be set up in position to stop that. So not a lot of, not a lot that Sheth can do at this time right now, uh, besides continue to make these lings. Uh, he got that infestation pit uh, done, and it, pathogen glands is almost done as well so we should be seeing some investors pop out here momentarily he's got that hive tech on the way one spire on the way so he's going to be probably going straight for broodlord tech here momentarily as well and that's uh that's going to be a great great position for sheth Ooh, but we do see actually already vikings being produced by thorzane you know he's getting close to that 200 200 max so he's making sure that he's really safe he must have spotted that Spire, he just knows Sheth's style. Let's see, he has no vision on the tech at all. So that's really interesting that he's starting to pump out a few Vikings here and there. Maybe he just wants to try and pick off some overlords there. A lot of lings do get roasted by those Hellions. It looks like we're going to see EG's Thorzane getting a lot more map control right now. making Maybe making another small methodical push, you know, to take out these creep tumors again. One lone marine going into scout right now. That is one brave soul going in. Uh, he's going to get picked off by these lings and these queens, not doing a lot of scouting. Uh, we see some more lings scouting sh for Sheth right now. He's scouting for any secret expansions or anything of, like that. Uh, you know, he doesn't want EG uh, Thorzane getting ahead in bases at all. Here comes that push by Thorzane right now. A lot of tanks and marines out on the field. More creep tumors being denied. The creep is not going to be able to spread east at all on this map. You know, Thor uh Sheth is going to be able to spread the creep up north really easily, but you know, as we see Thorazane continue to keep his position in the middle of the map with these tanks, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a lot harder for Sheth to reinforce his army. This is a great positioning, 
Great positioning by Thorzane right now. These tanks all kind of clumped up right here. He has to be careful of that, but no banelings or anything like that out on the field. We should be seeing a drop right here. Oh, but there was a nice, nice counterattack uh, with these lings. It looks like he probably dropped them in the main, so actually Sheth dropping Thorzane uh, in these close positions, something I did not expect at all, so I, we might have missed some action there. Sorry, guys. So there's some lings taking out a lot of infrastructure in the main right now. Uh, finally, we see Thorzane having to pull his army back, but no, he's actually pushing forward, and Fester's getting a nice fungal on a lot of those marines. Spinecrawler trying to take out these Hellions. Tanks not moving forward. We see Thorzane probably concentrating on a lot of areas right now. These overlords are all going to get taken out by these marines. There's more lings in the main right now. They're maybe going to be able to take out a supply depot and an army, armory, but not much, but they did stall a lot of mining time. Let's see how many workers were taken out. Workers killed. He was able to take out at least 18 workers right there. And uh, that was a nice, nice counterattack. More Lings streaming in right now. And we've only seen Chef use Lings this game. He did have those Infestors that did get a nice fungal. Lings going in towards these tanks. They're going to be able to take out one tank. But no, there's too many tanks that are spread out in the back. So one more tank that is going to be weakened up front. But the huge Ling encounter still going down. So no more reinforcements for Thorzane are really going to be able to come. There's a huge clump of Marines right here that are going to be really hard to take out. Another clump of Marines reinforcing this as well. So a lot of Lings are going to go down because these Medivacs are going to continue to heal these marines and you really need those infestors and with their fungals around to handle this yes chef does not want to battle up into this small ramp choke so he does decide to pull these lings back to take out a few scvs and i like that decision making by him lings are being pulled back to the middle right now he's going to try and flank these tanks which is going to be a really really good choice there he goes getting the zel naga so uh, that thorzane is going to be playing a little bit in the dark and these tanks are just sitting duck ducks out here 40 lings in production more corruptors continuing to pop out we have the greater spire about three-fourths of the way done uh, we have a fourth and a fifth base up for Sheth. He has not utilized them. He can't really transfer any drones right now and the position and the containment that Thorzane has on him. These four lone marines that are very, very weak are continuing to take out actually a lot of drones right now. But these infestors, oh, they are going to make a little bit of a sneak attack. More reinforcements coming in from the Terran mains. And th there we go. Thorzane taking advantage of that finally. Spore crawler not able to take out a medevac. A lot, a lot of Marines streaming in right now. Going to be able to do a lot of damage, but these Infested Terrans are going to be melting because there are so many Marines right now. 2-2, two, 3-3 two, three, three on the way. Five Broodlords are being made. Where are those Broodlords being made? They have to be in a safe position. There they are, right inside the main right there. So all we have are those five Broodlords and these Lings running around, and more Lings continuing to die kind of carelessly by Sheth. And I still got to go off that fact that he's maybe tired from traveling a lot right now. So these five Broodlords are going to have to be the savior for Sheth right now. Those Broodlords are going to be able to do a lot of damage, but he's going to have to be really careful with them. Let's see how many Infestors he has out right now. He has five Infestors. He's going to have to get off some Money Fungals so those these Marines do not get close enough to snipe these Broodlords. There are no Vikings out right now. The worker count is about the same, but he did lose this third. We see another drop going down for Liquid Sheth. We're not going to miss this one, guys. This one's going to be really exciting. All full of Lings, of course. What kind of defenses does uh, Thorzane have? He has a couple Marines right here, but not a lot. A lot of SCVs could die from this. And we see another attack going down at this fourth base over here. These Marines are going to be able to melt this hatchery so quick. And there it goes. And as we see, uh, Liquid can't, Liquid Chef can't really do much about this, but now he's putting those Broodlords in position. And it's actually going to be really hard for these Marines to battle into. These Infestors trying to move up. Hopefully they can get off a really good fungal. We see Lings uh, now finally being cleaned up. Let's see if any more workers were taken out. Yes, only about six more workers, so not a lot of damage done compared to what Thorzane has done to Chef. But there we go, that little squad up there has been removed. So we need to see Sheth put up a third base quickly. These two Marines stopping Sheth from putting up a, a third base. We should be able to see them being taken out quite quickly. And we have another command center, a fourth base, finally going to be going up uh, in here in the top right position. I think he was trying to go for this gold, but I think he knows that he can't kind of hold that position now that the Broodlords are out on the field. So we're going to have to see that Viking production kick in, which it is. And we uh, also see a lot of Thor, uh, Thors being made as well. So here goes, still having a decent position out here in the middle of the map. Se tanks not even sieged up. I like that because if they were sieged up, it would take forever for them to unsiege. The Broodlords would take them out way too quick. So just keeping them unsieged for a little bit of a defensive measure. Uh, great move by Thorzane. Sheth now finally taking his third back here pretty soon. Going to be uh, trying to utilize this base really up here in the top left hand corner as much as he can because that's really going to be uh, one of his only new mining bases. 
He's still got quite a bit of mining to do on this natural, but you know that of course that is going to run out here momentarily. So he needs to start utilizing this top left base and this natural third once again. Uh, Thorzane just playing it really slow, you know, not overextending himself, thinking that he has the win and continues to reinforce. No, he he did the damage he wanted to do and then he pulled back. Really like that decision making from the Spoon Terran himself. Here we have that fourth base is finally up. A lot of mules being thrown down. That map control that Thorzane has had this entire time, the vision he's had, he has his half of the map. And he, we actually see a drop going down up here in that top left-hand base. And there's not a lot of reinforcements for Chef, so this is not looking good. So many drones. Not a lot of these drones are actually going to get picked off. A couple of them are, but this base could go down, and that would not be good for Sheth right now. So this hatchery is about to go down. An Infestor pops out. He could get a fungal down, but of course it would not kill all of these marines. There are no links to reinforce this as well. So this fourth base up here is going to go down. And as we see this fourth base going down, we see Thorzane starting to move in for the kill. We see these Broodlords set up in decent position. These Infestors, again, have to get off money fungals, but there are going to be quite a bit of Vikings out on the field. Where are those Vikings at? There's one Viking. Is there only one? There's only one, so that's going to get taken out right away. Fungals going down on this little drop over here in the third base. Drones transferring to the third base. Tons of Infestors out right now, so these Infestors could keep the Marines at bay as the Broodlords start to siege upon this mech army down here. But again, these Thors are going to be able to do a ton of damage to these Broodlords, so Sheth is going to have to be really careful with this we see more corruptors and upgrades on the ways for both players right now broodlord starting to move in again have to be careful with the marines this is going to be probably the big engagement going down infest infested terrans being thrown out fungals being thrown out a lot of that bio force getting cleaned up by that fungal tanks finally being taken out let's see we got f five broodlords left one broodlord about to go down these broodlords doing a ton of damage but i just don't think he had enough broodlords he should have got that broodlord count you know up to eight or ten at least but you know since Thorzane was able to take s these small advantages throughout the game by denying his third denying that base in the top left uh Sheth just got stuck he couldn't he couldn't continue that broodlord production on the resources that he was getting so now we see Thorzane moving in for the kill once again and I think this is gonna be GG for Sheth uh Thorzane setting himself up in a really good position over here on this ledge and it looks like he's gonna cut back and maybe go take out this third over here that third is almost dead 46 hit points left on that third infested terrans trying to do their best to defend but you know they only last so long before they disintegrate so we'll have to see how this battle is going to turn out only two marines going down in liquid chef throwing out the gg guys once again this has been robert loves games please feel free to give me some feedback on what i can do to improve my starcraft 2 casting again i'm, I'm just kind of getting into this just out of the fanboyism of loving StarCraft, loving esports, and just picking up a little hobby and uh, loving to entertain people. So uh, feel free to tell me what I can do to uh, improve my casting. Thank you guys again for watching. Have a good day.